Hi there. Let's work on doing an advanced Photoshop composition using layer masks and other blending modes and effects. All right, so let's see how we get started. So what we've got here is a document I've set up that has a uh, temporary uh, grid set up in the background, a composition grid, and uh, a few resources inside this picture, some pictures of the Avengers that we're gonna use to composite into our poster. Now, personally, in terms of illustration, I love using compositional tools like a diagonal grid like this to help me set up a dynamic uh, composition. And so I use that as a guide as I kind of scale and compose the pictures. Uh, you should do that too. Whenever you're working on illustration, use a grid, a guide, some sort of compositional tool to help you get the optimum results and to create a focal point and a point of emphasis in your poster. So I've already kind of pre-planned this. So we'll walk through some of the steps of using layer masks and some of the other effects to get this to work right. Uh, just to take a look at the resources, I have a picture of the Avengers logo. I've got an Iron Man, a Thor, and a Captain America picture. And we're gonna put these together and make it into a nice little Marvel poster. All right, so let's start with the logo. That's gonna be kind of our starting point as we develop where this is going to go. I went ahead and positioned it at the bottom. The idea being that I wanted to make uh, this logo kind of blend into the background, going from like dark to light uh, from the bottom to the top. And I already pre-positioned the Avengers logo so it's down toward the base underneath the, um, the grid lines. So it's a, it's a square, I wanna blend it into the background. And the best way to do that, I think, is gonna to be to create a temporary uh, transparent layer with a black gradient in it to blend into that background. So I'm gonna to move to my layer palette and underneath the Avengers logo, I'm gonna create a new blank layer. And for fun, I'm gonna name this gradient so I know which layer it is. And what I'm gonna do is sample the color that's in the Avengers logo picture first. So I'm gonna use my eyedropper and I'm gonna click on that, uh, that layer to make sure that I've sampled the correct black color into the, um, the eyedropper and the fill square. So I click that black color, I've got that loaded uh, into my uh, uh, foreground. Now I'm gonna switch over to the gradient tool. Now something to look at is the way the gradient tool uh, operates. Depending on which you have set as the default, when you select the gradient tool, you're gonna to get up at the top a gradient selector. And now they're kind of organized into uh, little folders. So I'm gonna expand this into basics. And the one I'm looking for is the black to transparent. That's the one with the little checkerboard because basically I wanna just paint black and have it fade to transparent over the background. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna click on that one, collapse that dialog box, and starting near the top edge of that Avengers logo, making sure that I'm actually on the gradient layer, I'm gonna click and drag upward with my cursor, using that gradient tool to paint into that space. So there, if I did it correctly, and I'm transitioning from black to transparent, the logo or the uh, gradient, I mean, should fade into the background and you should now see uh, the logo faded over the top. And that's good. That's kind of the way I want it positioned. Next, let's take a look at Iron Man. So I'm gonna turn on Iron Man here. All right. What I need to do is remove Iron Man from the background and then reduce his size a little bit. For this, I'm gonna use a layer mask. I'll make sure now that I've selected the Iron Man layer. Okay, and I'm gonna use a quick selection. So I'm gonna switch over to my toolbar and I'm gonna grab the quick selection tool. I'm gonna make it a little bit larger, so I'm gonna select the right hand bracket key, making it about that size. And I'm gonna click and drag over the surface of Iron Man here as I try to select his suit. 
and try not to select the background. It's a good idea as you're using the quick selection tool to pick up the mouse and move to a new position. Sometimes it's good even just to tap and not worry about brushing with the quick selection tool. Because sometimes if you brush, you pick up more than you intend, like just there, it snapped into the background. So what I'm gonna do, I need to go back in and correct some of that where I've selected more than I needed to. To do that, you hold the Option key or the Alt key if you're on a PC. See how the quick selection turns into a minus? It's gonna allow me to brush into this area that I wanna keep out of the selection, like the background. And uh, it's gonna ignore that stuff. Maybe reduce the size a little bit and get in there under his arm. Yeah, that should be pretty good. All right. <clears throat> This part down toward the bottom of the picture, I am gonna go ahead and uh, hide behind the black gradient we just made. So it doesn't need to be 100% perfect. Uh, perfect. Just do wanna take another look around the picture to make sure I got everything in there. All his head and helmet and so on. Looking pretty good. All right. So, now what I'm gonna do is turn that selection into a mask. So here we go. What I'm gonna do, make sure Iron Man is selected. The quick selection has been made. Now I'm gonna click on the layer mask button on the layer palette. That is the uh, little white triangle, or white triangle, white rectangle with a black circle. Click that button and it's gonna make a mask out of that selection. And so now everything I selected is visible everything I ignored is now hidden. Now's the time when I can select Iron Man again, select that portion of the layer and transform him to fit into his spot. So I'm gonna to go to the edit menu, select transform and scale. And now I'm going to reduce the size a little bit, kind of drag him over here to the left-hand side of the picture. And here what I'm trying to do is kind of put him over to the side. And notice how, as I'm paying attention to this composition, I'm keeping him in line with the diagonal on the left-hand side. This is gonna create kind of a, a beauty shot where you have kind of a, a pyramid. Iron Man on one side, Captain America on the other, Thor in the middle. Kind of the, the Trinity, the Marvel Trinity, okay? Now let's take a look at Captain America and find a spot for him. So, similar to the way we worked on Iron Man, I want him um, to be isolated from the background and put off to the right. But looking at this picture and the way Iron Man looks, it might be better if he's pointing the other direction. So before I mask it, I'm gonna go to the edit menu and I'm gonna try flipping it horizontally and see what happens. That's good. I kind of like that. Have Iron Man looking one way, Captain America looking the other. Now I'm gonna try the quick selection tool. See if I can't grab cap. Now, if I need to see this better, I can always hide Iron Man. That's good. Kind of brush in there. helpful and then make sure I get his nose don't want to cut that off or his helmet that's looking pretty good and shrink the brush a little bit remove some of that selection that didn't need to be there using alt that's good All right, I'm trying to go quickly because I don't want to bore you with all the little minute details, but that's good enough for, for us at this point. So now we know what to do. Hit that layer mask button. And now Captain America is isolated by himself 
and I can switch over and scale him and put him into position. Go ahead and turn Iron Man back on so you can kind of see. There we go. Maybe what I'll do is change the order here. I'll move Captain America up above Iron Man. That way, the uh, Iron Man covers the cutoff part of our, or I'm sorry, Captain America covers Iron Man's arm there. So maybe I'll slide just a little bit more, get him kind of lined up. They're about the same height. Maybe scale Iron Man just a little bit make him slightly smaller. Let's go to the edit menu, scale it. There we go. Now, he's tilted a little bit too much. I can always rotate him a little bit. I think I'll do that. Go back to edit, transform, and rotate. There, just, just about that much is good. Okay, so now we're cooking. Now it's time for Thor. Let's put Thor in there. So turn on the Thor layer, bring him up and uh, kind of position him. And you guessed it, we need to isolate him from his background. So I'm gonna use the quick selection tool. And this time, just try to brush through his face and his hair, his flowing, beautiful hair. There we go. If I was doing this for, oh, look at that. It selected everything, not what I wanted. So back off a little bit, reduce a little more using the option key. There we go, it's a little bit better. That is really jittery, it wants to pick up the background. So I gotta use the option key to bring it back. Okay, now that I've got my selection in place, I'll mask it and then scale it down. Now, you can see there are a couple defects on this picture, on this sample. You know, on that Iron Man, I'm sorry, on the Thor layer, his body gets cut off here. It'd be better if I had a full-size picture where you could see his torso hidden behind them. But I think you get the idea. Now let's talk about some blending modes and some things we might do to this to give it a little more character. So while Thor is selected, let's try a blending mode on him and see what happens. Under the... Uh, normal menu on the layer palette, you have these blending modes and these adjust the way one layer blends into another. And sometimes it's just fun to experiment and see what they do. Like let's say I picked, you know, overlay or soft light or vivid light or something like that. Sometimes you can make a ghosted image blending into the background with either like multiply or screen or one of those. Like screen may not be exactly what I want, but I think you see that by using a blending mode, sometimes we can make these images uh, do different things. And so what might be possible is something like this, where let's say I did a, a dual image. So let's say I'm gonna zoom in here on Thor to kind of show how I can blend two layers together using a blending mode. So let's say I have this first Thor layer, which I've made with the mask and the screen blending mode on the layer palette. Then watch what happens if I duplicate that layer. Okay, so I make a Thor copy. And now, you know, with two of them, one on top of the other, it got quite a bit brighter. But watch what happens if I take the original I'm sorry, the copy layer, and I return the, uh, the layer to normal, okay? But watch what happens when I paint on the mask. So I have the normal layer above 
the faded version of Thor, right? Now I'm going to select the copy layer and I'm going to select the copy layer mask and I'm going to use a paintbrush. And what I'm going to do is enlarge that paintbrush, pretty large. And I'm going to adjust the opacity of that brush. So maybe it's something like, you know, 25%. So not fully vibrant. And I'm going to paint around the edge of Thor. So essentially what I'm doing when I'm doing this is I'm blending the fully visible opaque layer into the faded layer underneath. And sometimes by combining two layers like that, you can create an interesting blending effect where you've got, again, one color version of Thor blending into another. It can even get more powerful if you start adjusting colors as well. So let's say I, I'm gonna go kind of extreme on this so it's pretty obvious what, what happens. So let's say I have, you know, that layer faded into the one underneath. So just certain portions of Thor are visible, okay? Now this is where it's gonna get a little bit tricky and you have to pay attention to your layer order. If I take the Thor layer here and I do a color adjustment to that underlying layer, I'm gonna actually blend a colored Thor into the brighter vibrant opaque Thor up above. Let's try that. I'm gonna to go to hue and saturation under my adjustment palette. If you don't see the adjustment palette, go to window and look for adjustments making sure that I have selected the proper layer order. I'm gonna select the original th Thor and then select, oh, actually, sorry. I don't wanna forget one important step. I am going to mask this color adjustment over the top of the Thor layer that I have uh, in the layer mask I already made for Thor. So that means I'm gonna make my selection out of Thor first. So hold your command key or your control key on your PC and click the mask of the Thor layer. And what that does is it makes an active selection out of that shape. That's what I need for the, the color adjustment layer. Once I have an active selection made, select the hue and saturation layer and notice how it inserted now a hue and saturation layer above that Thor picture. And then watch what happens if I adjust the color on that layer. It just adjusts that layer by itself. And it doesn't affect the background, it doesn't affect Cap or Iron Man because it's confined by that mask. Watch what happens if I hit colorize. It totally adjusts the color of just that background piece of Thor. Maybe if I tilt it toward blue a little bit and desaturate, even lighten a little bit. So what do I have going on here? I have, I'm gonna turn off layers and show. So first I have my faded Thor layer masked over the background. I just added a color adjustment which made him look blue. Then I added a, th a third layer above which is the semi-transparent faded Thor over the top. And so by brushing, tweaking the masks and playing around with those things, you can blend these objects and make a multi-layered uh, composition and collage of pictures. All the while trying to pay attention to my composition and my overall goal for the illustration. So hopefully that gives you some ideas on how you can use masks with duplicate layers, a few adjustments, blending modes and things to create more complex and interesting compositions out of your artwork. All right. Hope you get good results. See you next time.